hello 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 again and I'm back with another video this will be a quick one probably uh, I just wanted to address these dungeons mostly the Kairos and Path of Gold and the reason I want to address them is because you get very limited entries to each of these dungeons and uh, all those entries are shared across each uh, dungeon type so for example in Cairo there are different elements and for Path of Training as you can see I haven't done mine yet but there are six entries and they all are shared between all these, all these, all these dungeons and you'll want to have like a priority list of what to use them on since you only get six a day and uh, as discussed in my previous video, you get another 12 uh, from the shop that you can buy. Yeah, so starting with Kairos, since it's pretty simple in my opinion. Uh, these are mostly used for awakening, since uh, you get these essences, and essences are used for awakening monsters. Where is it? Yeah, here. Uh, right, so first of all, I'd say Essence of Magic will be the most important one since the first awakening uh, let me find the unit yeah the first awakening will require magic essences only and all subsequent awakenings will require more magic essences than the uh, color ones as you can see yeah 40 magic with 30 fire 40 magic 30 fire if you go crazy and go up to 10 stars you can see the price of magic essences is way higher than the elemental ones uh, so yeah, uh, as for Kairos, you will want to mostly farm uh, the Hall of Magic. If you don't have a specific goal, you should definitely farm Hall of Magic since these essences will be the most useful for you. Uh, and you should leave these uh, colored ones, like all five elements, only until you need essences for a specific monster. So for example, I wanted to awaken my Ariel. It was uh, a five star unit now and got the, his new uh, ultimate skill. So, if you want to rush a specific element, uh, consider using the, uh, your entries on the colored ones. Of course, go as far as you can. Uh, and since the entries are limited, I would actually recommend, for example, if you die at uh, stage seven but can only do order on six sticks, you, I would recommend going into seven and trying to do a little bit of manual play there uh, since these entries are super limited uh, and you can actually not lose them if you lose the battle uh, it would be better to do as high stage as possible since these essences work it's two more than stage six for example but uh, after doing it six times they will definitely stack up it's basically an extra free run but if you do not have a goal uh, of what you want to awaken uh, Every day, make sure to use all of your entries on the Hall of Magic. And now going to the Path of Growth, uh, you should, in my opinion, only focus it on Path of Adventure. Path of Training you should ignore completely since it gives these uh, XP potions and you can get a bunch of them. And I mean a bunch of them from going to quests, repeat quests, and based on the area you can complete, you can get these auto quests and you get, for example, for the fourth area, you get 35 normal XP potions. So basically one run of this is already like five run of that dungeon. And uh, yeah, it's definitely not efficient going there. Subjugation gives you various, uh, what are they called, uh, equipment, like uh, weapons, shields, uh, earrings, other accessories, stuff like that. Uh, you'll want to do this uh, eventually, but for now, I would say you should not focus on the lower level ones since the items in the scenario you get are a bit better than the ones you will be getting from completing these. Because, uh, yeah, I was just completing my main quest, and I believe I'm getting already like uh, four star blue weapons, four star purple weapons. Yeah, uh, so the gear you get. Since it's pretty low star rating yet, you won't be powering it a lot. See, uh, for the four star ones, I decided to go plus nine. 
So I use this as my main weapon, the fire one, I just got this, so I didn't get to around to powering with it just yet. And you can go to plus 6, I try to go plus 9 for 4 stars. So uh, until you can unlock the later stages of this dungeon, wh whichever one you decide to focus on, I mean, you'll, you'll need to focus on all of them since they drop different uh, colored, uh, not different color, but different rarity. Uh, items and they drop different items so for example one drops the shield for example the other drop the earnings weapons and stuff like that uh, and what i recommend focusing on is part of the adventure since these dungeons give runes and you'll be needing a lot of runes at least a lot more compared to how much you'll be needing equipment since eventually once you get all of your equipment from here you will most likely forget this dungeon and uh, focus completely on this. Uh, as for these dungeons, in my opinion, after checking all of the runes that you get here, uh, I would say Forgotten Earth Shrine will be the most one you would want to focus on, with the close second being the Third Landscape. Uh, the reason I prefer this is Fatal Runes. Fatal Runes will in the early game be way better than rage runes since you most likely won't be using a rage build or rage blade build uh, as the substats from the runes you in my opinion you won't be getting 100 percent crit rate so just building uh, on that flat attack is a bit better as you can see i tried experimenting with uh, yeah this guy uh, the wind sylph I tried putting 6 blade runes on him, so that's 36 additional crit rate. I've checked the best crit rate subs I had, and even then, the total I came up with, yeah, it's just not looking good. So, if you build a rage blade build, it'll definitely be even worse. And if you do not reach 100% crit rate, it will be super inefficient to use it. So. For the early game, and I'm mostly talking early to sort of going later into mid game, uh, you should focus on the Forgotten Earth Shrine, in my opinion. And eventually, you want to move into, if you are looking to build damage units, uh, into the Dirk landscape. Since Rage Blade, it will be the ultimate uh, late game damage build, but you do need really good rooms to make that actually work since in most units you'll need around 100% crit rate to make the rage rooms actually useful since they only give damage and for here you also get uh, guard rooms so it's a great option for more tanky or defensive units and even for early game i'd say if you build an attacker and you don't have enough stats to power up with for example, Fatal Blade, Rage Blade, or something like that. You can actually just go something like Fail Guard and just go for overall stats from the sets. Since the, the stats on the runes that you get, like 3 star ones, 4 star ones, won't be too huge and the set bonuses will actually be super useful as well. Uh, and in my opinion, I'll be going, uh, focusing uh, on this dungeon mostly. So since it's a fire element, you can uh, pinpoint uh, the team you build exactly on one dungeon. So for example, if this uh, dungeon is fire element, I can focus all my units uh, to be water element. And that way, if I build those specific units, I'll be able to do, for example, level 10 here versus what I'll be, I could be doing like level 7 in other dungeons. Right? So if I... Yeah, just a, as a general advice, see which dungeon you feel most like doing and focus only on that one dungeon. I would recommend one of these. Uh, these are, I mean, energy runes are good, but I'm not a fan of endurance. Uh, focus, yeah, focus is very specific rune that not a lot of units can use. Precision. Uh, I'm not sure about it. I'm not a big fan from what I've used them. Uh, Swift, uh, Swift will be very situational, so I don't recommend going for the early game. And evasion, just as precision, won't be that useful as flash stats go. 
So in my order, I would say this is the best dungeon, this is the second best, and this is the third best in my opinion. Uh, but uh, see which element units you got. For example, if you got a lot of really good wind units, maybe you'll want to focus this and you'll, be have, you'll have an easier time building a specific dungeon for this team. Specific team for this dungeon. I mean. I'm getting confused. This game is way too confusing. <laughs> yeah, so pick a dungeon, uh, try to laser focus it, climb as high as you can. You can even do manual if you are struggling a bit since you also get very limited entries when you want to make them count. And yeah, uh, I hope this helped you decide what you should focus as far as Kairos and Tato Pro Dungeons go. And see you in the next one.